This time, we're searching for first homes for two <laughs> pairs of lovebirds. We're going to need to fight negativity. The garden is just such a letdown. That seems to be causing problems. Have you noticed I'm being very quiet and philosophical? No. Though if we harness the power of positive thinking... I sense with my special skills. We might just come up smelling of roses. Oh, thanks, <laughs> That is a big tick. I like it when I can turn a negative into a positive. <laughs> This week, we're scouring the south coast from Southampton to the New Forest and further afield for two sets of buyers who are thinking big. But while the view is beautiful, are there enough houses on the horizon? Doesn't look like many to me. I know. <laughs> it could be in short order. Our search this time takes us flying over the ancient hunting ground of the New Forest and in the bustling international port city of Southampton. This area has beautiful market towns, a proud maritime history, and its very own indigenous horse, the New Forest Pony. Which means the houses only last a couple of days on the market before being snapped up. House prices in Southampton have galloped up by 7% over the past year, but they've leapt by 12% in some areas of the New Forest. The word from local estate agents is the market is strong, with buyers rushing to purchase in the area. With busy lifestyles and a market that's moving this fast... Come on, Val. It's no wonder long-term sweethearts Georgie and Will are having trouble finding a place they can finally be together. Although we haven't lived with each other an extended period, we do know each other's sort of bad habits and, uh, and good habits. <laughs> and good habits. So I think uh, hopefully there won't be any shocks, surprises. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> But they have an extra issue. Construction manager Will is having to work abroad in Belgium during the week, leaving Georgie, who lives in the New Forest with her mum, to set up viewings for when he's home. I live out of a bag yeah. most weeks. And it is hard, isn't it, because we don't see each other. And it does mean we have quite a limited amount of time at weekends. It is really frustrating, I think, because the ones that we want to go and see do get snapped up really quickly. Georgie will show me a house that's come up, and then within two or three days, it's, it's already been sold. The couple, who grew up in the countryside, still love to spend time there. At the weekends, Will burns off the stresses of his working week on his off-road motorbike. And sailing fanatic Georgie has her perfect job as a yachting events coordinator. And this love of open space is informing their house hunt. I would like something that's big enough that I don't feel claustrophobic at all. Yeah. But I also have quite a big family. I'd love to be able to invite them all around for Christmas yeah. and have Christmas Day at our place. Yeah. With savings and some inheritance, these sociable first-time buyers have got a good deposit together. So they're looking at larger houses around the £415,000 mark. But there's fierce competition for properties in this price bracket. And I think because we have got that extra bit of money to spend, is that we can look for something bigger yeah. and we can stretch ourselves a bit. But it's no good having a budget that big if you've not got the time for viewings. Q-Pip. It sounds like a very busy time of life for you guys. Not much time spent house hunting. No. <laughs> Sadly not, no. Because Will's away, I've been and seen three properties, but okay. we've had a few viewings pulled out from underneath yeah. us. So. Well, I'm, I'm here to try and help you through yeah. that. It's not <laughs> going to be a walk in the park, as you've <laughs> found out, yeah. um, because the market is rapid. Mm -hmm. What's on the wish list? My key criterion is that we like a nice social space. I do a lot of cooking and Will does help, so... I do a lot of eating. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's quite nice that if I was in the kitchen and we have friends over, that it, you're not sort of secluded from them. And talk to me about the outside. I'd like to have a garden out the back. Mm. I do like a bit of grass, so mm. uh, ultimately I'd like a ride on lawnmower. It's every, every man's every, dream. Every man's <laughs> dream, exactly. It sounds to me like you guys have a pretty clear idea of what you want, where you want, what yeah. it's likely to cost. And helpfully in this fast-paced market, Will and Georgie have already got their finances organised, with a big deposit and mortgage adding up to a healthy £415,000. They're searching for a house with a minimum of three bedrooms. And location is important, as they want to stay somewhere close to the market town of Ringwood. They want a large, open-plan space for entertaining and a decent garden to fulfil Will's lawnmower dream. 
Well, Phil, they seem to know what they want. But you've only got a few days before Will has to leave the green, green grass of home and head back to Belgium. Sold, sold, sold and sold. The couple have been searching near the New Forest National Park, just west of Southampton. And I've definitely got my work cut out for me, as their top spot of Ringwood, on the edge of the National Park, is one of the most popular market towns in the UK. So we're expanding our search to take in the nearby towns of Sway and Verwood. And I'm starting my search east of the New Forest in Southampton where first-time buyers Tom and Jenny are keen to move out of their rental flat and get into a home of their own. In this property, we're not necessarily looking for a forever home at the moment. It's more of an investment at the moment because we are tired of renting and we'd like to get on the property ladder. So it'd be nice to have our own little bit of Britain, really, that we can <laughs> start to call our own. Yeah. It's You're cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> Tom and Jenny want a home with three bedrooms and a garden and are using a novel method to scour the streets. We've been training for a half marathon recently, so there was lots of routes that we had to take to try yeah. and make it a little bit more interesting. I get quite bored with running, so it's quite nice when Tom does a different route yeah. and uh, we see a different street just, that perhaps we haven't done. We just done, have to map so. it first, turn left here, turn right there. Yeah. So <laughs> you we can give it a little bit well. lost. <laughs> But no sooner do our keen runners hop foot it past the perfect property... Look at that one! ...than it's sold. Oh, they're flying yeah, like they hotcakes. they do seem to fly off the yeah. shelves, don't they? The quicker than we can get to view them, which is so frustrating, because we feel so like we're missing out on what would be our perfect house, really. With the help of their joint savings, Tom and Jenny have secured a mortgage agreement of £250,000, but are only prepared to borrow the full amount for the right house. Jenny, lay out for me your top priorities. A garden? Yeah. A lovely, eerie kitchen with a window. OK. Don't show us something that is perfect with all the bells and whistles on mm. it. We really want we want, a project, yeah. Yeah, yeah, close to town, but it has that community feel about mm. it. Outdoors, lots of yeah. green. Right. Um, we want the quiet yeah, exactly. life think... sort of thing. OK, I'm going to completely come out with it. If I had been given your notes and not your age, I would have thought that you were 55. <laughs> and you wanted to buy a house, which <laughs> meant that when you lost the ability to drive, you wouldn't be totally cut off from a community. <laughs> uh, I was expecting a slaughtering, but just not that quickly. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a slaughtering. It's not a slaughtering. Just don't kill us. I won't kill you. I swear <laughs> to God. I've yet okay, to kill good. anyone. 17 years, yeah. I've never <laughs> got actual blood on my hands. Look. You've come pretty close with me once or twice. Don't worry, Phil, everyone's safe. But these two need to think carefully about exactly what it is they want at this youthful stage in their life. So, with a budget of £250,000, Tom and Jenny are looking to invest in a home with three bedrooms so they can have family to stay. They want a project they can get their hands dirty with and Jenny would love a bright, airy kitchen. And most importantly, they want to feel part of a close-knit community. So we're sprinting east of the New Forest to the suburbs of the port city of Southampton. And we'll be focusing our search on the popular fast-moving markets of Shirley and Hive. So I must get my running spikes on and help my first-time buyers reach the finish line, a home of their own with a village feel in the city. And I need to find a home where the New Forest ponies roam for my couple. But before that, you should get off your horse and drink your coffee. Mm. Calm before the storm, I think. Well, I may have caused the storm at the beginning. Why? She said, I knew you'd be tough, I didn't know you'd be this tough. <laughs> right, well, all I said I was, do you... Them. I just thought to myself, are they terrified of me or the market? Have they been out looking? They've been looking for four months and like two things which they weren't able to get into. The market's moving very fast it in Southampton, yeah. My couple talked about space, space, space. It's all about space. Will commutes to Belgium, so they haven't been able to go house hunting. There is a little pressure on me to do the right thing this week because if they don't find it this week, he's just going to go back to Belgium on Monday and house hunting becomes a nightmare again. It's a much faster moving market down here than I was expecting. Looks like we're both going to have to be fast out of the starting gate to keep up with the pace houses are moving around here. I'm chomping at the bit. If it's size they want, I've found the perfect place, just over five miles northwest of their number one spot of Ringwood, in the small town of Verwood. Verwood offers what Will and Georgie are looking for in a town. Popular shops, restaurants and bars, 
but with easy access to the open countryside. They want lots of space to socialise, and as Verwood is less expensive than their preferred area of Ringwood, their budget will buy them considerably more. But with low stock and high demand in the New Forest, there have already been three viewings and one offer on the first property I'm showing them. It looks lovely. Are you familiar with Verwood? It wasn't part of our search area. If that house was in Ringwood, it would be £100,000 more. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So it's a question of, is it... House is location, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that old address. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say <laughs> it. <laughs> Well, fingers crossed, this four-bedroom house has the space that they need to entertain friends. Downstairs, the spacious lounge flows through to a large dining room and a sociable open kitchen diner. Perfect for that big family Christmas. And outside, the pristine garden has plenty of space for when Will and George's fun spills out through the patio doors. It's bang on their budget of £415,000, but with the alarming pace of the New Forest Market, They'll have to act quickly to get it. So it's a really well-balanced house. It'll be good for entertaining you. It's got the social space yeah. in it, yeah. You can see it already, can't you? It would be interesting to see if you could knock down that wall, make it open yeah. yes. completely, rather than having the separate living areas. Yeah. Come on, let's do some more. First room, and they're already renovating. It's a good start. So a dining room and then food of the kitchen. It's bright, it's clean, it's easy to live in. Yeah. This already has a social space in the yeah, kitchen, yeah. ready to go. You so. can have drinks while yeah, exactly. cooking. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like it. Now, the garden is south-facing. I'm afraid it doesn't come with any grass. <laughs> ah, south. yeah. It's I don't of... think you can mow this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the AstroTurf is a little bit too, too, too far away from what I like. Yeah. No trampolining? Mm, that would come out, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is all fixable but the garden's not actually making them jump for joy. However, there's plenty more upstairs. Wow. That's enormous. That's a very big room. They've got one suite. It does seem to be going really well. They're certainly impressed with all the space. Wow. wow. Good sized bathroom, yeah. Huge en suite. But you know what? I've been doing this job too long to think that my work is done. What do you reckon, then? I don't know. The rooms are massive. We'd certainly be able to host Christmas here <laughs> for most of the village. We want a big house, but I think maybe a big house with maybe less rooms. I think you might have overdone it this time, Phil. How did I do? Uh, a lot better than we thought. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it, it's just enormous. It's huge. This is a family home ready to go. Just had children. Yeah, yeah, I think this is just too big for us. Fine, fine. And how about the garden? So I wouldn't want to go any smaller. No. Smaller house, bigger garden. Well, yeah. Closer, closer <laughs> yeah. to... To Ringwood. It's, see, I like it when I can turn a negative into a <laughs> yeah, positive. Yeah, it's a positive, yeah. <laughs> well, Phil, Will and Georgie asked for room, and you gave them room. And they've given me room for improvement. The real challenge is going to be finding them a big house with less space. This week, I'm chasing around Southampton with my pair, Tom and Jenny, who want that ever-elusive village feel in a city. And I'm trekking around the countryside with Georgie and Will, who are discovering that bigger isn't always better. You know that village thing, Phil? Yes. I just think if you want a village feel... Live in a village. Live in a village. <laughs> Will and Georgie are yearning for their first home together. They said they wanted a large house, but the first property I showed them was too big. It's huge. It was very long. I really wasn't expecting this much space. And my keen runners, Tom and Jenny, want to stop wasting money on rent and find a three-bedroom home with open views and a community feel. Basically, the countryside in the heart of the city. But I'm going to have to coach them for a sprint, not a marathon, in this runaway Hampshire housing market. We've come to Shirley. Some of these are nice. With its shops, bars and green spaces, Shirley is popular with first-time buyers, as it's close to the city centre. And it's Tom and Jenny's top choice, not least because they live nearby and we're not far from there. In terms of location, we've got Upper Shirley there, as you know, yeah. and we've got Shirley High Street there, and you're <laughs> absolutely 50-50. Yeah. But what's stunning about this house is its size and its outlook. So come in and have yeah, a look. Definitely. This period terraced house offers a great opportunity for Tom and Jenny, and it ticks a few very important boxes for them. These two are feeling squashed in their rental flat. 
but this place has three bedrooms, a modern airy kitchen and a generous garden. And that generous garden opens out onto a huge playing field. If it's village life in the city thereafter, this is about as close as you can get. It has an asking price of 230,000 pounds, 20 grand under the top of their budget. Oh, I really like this archway. It's beautiful. This house is lovely. It's packed yeah. with original features. Now, it's a modern kitchen. The size is perfect. It's great. And then what you've got is at the back an old sports ground bought by the council to prevent any development. Yes. Oh, so that's cool. ideal. I mean, come out and have a look. So there we have it. Oh. I believe this is what's called a south-facing garden, but I might be completely is wrong about this. Is it a south-facing garden? Well, it must, given the time of day, it must be. Serious brownie points if this is a south-facing garden. Southeast, yeah, because the sun's oh, going amazing. that way. That's a big tick. That is a big, big tick. I really like it. There you go, Phil. I've performed a miracle. The countryside right in the middle of the city. But can you astound them upstairs as well? Oh, wow. This wow, has got this a lot a of room, hasn't yeah. it? Oh, wow. Oh, my God! Yeah, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that either. When people say I keep the best for last, they are so wrong. This is a very strong house. And we're seeing it first because it's virtually under offer already. There is something about this house. Yeah. And I know it sounds silly, but that garden, it's just got me really yeah. excited. What is really nice about the garden is it's so quiet behind it as well. Yeah, it's so beautiful. While there's nothing stopping them from moving in, there are lots of mini-projects that could add value to this property. There's all sorts of things that yeah. you can do to this house to make it look really yeah. sweet and romantic. Yeah. I can definitely see the potential in this property so much. It's an exciting one to consider, definitely. I've only just begun, and this one is firmly in the running. OK, don't rub it in, Kirsty. Back in the New Forest, Will and Georgie are desperate to leave their parents and move into their first home. So we've come to their ideal location of Ringwood. Ringwood is full of upmarket gastropubs, seafood restaurants, butchers, bakers and even craft beer makers. Everything a couple could want. But it's also one of the most expensive market towns in the UK, with an average house price of around £400,000. Not a very nice house, but I think instantly you can see the difference because we've come to Ringwood. It's a semi-detached. Yeah. You've lost a bedroom. There's only three here. Yeah. And you've gained some grass. I can almost fit my ride on lawnmower <laughs> on it as well. <laughs> Currently vacant, this modern family house has three bedrooms and a very big open-plan kitchen. Ideal for the entertaining Will and Georgie plan to do. To the rear, there's a large, light lounge with patio doors leading out onto a generous lawn for Will's mower. This is a turnkey home that Will and Georgie could move straight into without doing any work. It's priced above their budget of £425,000. But I have heard the owners after a quick sale. Let's head on into the kitchen there. It's a slightly different concept looking round an empty house, but you can see it's a good-sized kitchen. It's a very good-sized yeah. kitchen. So you've got big understairs cupboard, downstairs loo. This is the yeah. main living room. Wow. Way. It's a very it's big a space. It's a very big living room. Yeah. It's a very big living room. And Georgie looks as though she's already moving her furniture in. You'd have bed there, you'd have bedside, look, you can even see, bedside table, and then you have that space to have chest of drawers. Well, it's not very often that somebody spending the top end of their budget says to me that they'd be happy with something smaller. But these guys have got their head screwed on, they know where they want to be, they've got a reasonable sense of what it's going to cost them to be there. This house is medal-winning, Phil, but I think you may be awarded the consolation prize for the garden. Yeah, I'm not, not quite sure how I feel about having a neighbour's garage in our garden. No, I don't. Honest. It's quite imposing, isn't it, into yeah. the area? Kind of encroaches in. And you talk about the garden? Yeah. Yeah. That seems to be causing a bit of a problem. No matter how you look at it, it's someone else's building in your garden. But in essence, you're happy enough with the size of the house, which yes. is great. Yes, very yeah. much so. Upstairs is perfect. Mm. The market's moving quickly. Let's keep this in the forefront of minds but see what else is out there in a, in a similar size. Okay. 
Uh-oh, I do hope the loss of a couple of feet in the garden isn't going to take this house out of the running. Over near Shirley, Tom and Jenny loved my first property. But I know ideally they wanted more of a project, and I think I've got one with real potential just a few streets away. So what we have here is a detached house. It's a complete project. Okay. It is on a busy road, but as soon as you're in the house, you just don't okay. notice it. OK. Its porch alone is just adorable. It's, yeah. it's really nice, um, but yeah. But it's a very different thing. OK. okay. Oh, I'm um, excited. Let's go inside. After you. Oh, thank you. Hopefully, they'll stay excited. This detached 1930s family home does need a lot of updating, but it's light and roomy with generous living space. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms and a family bathroom. And at the rear, there's a small garden. It has a guide price of £235,000, 15,000 under budget, leaving Tom and Jenny some spare cash for renovations. No. Wow, well, it's a big landing. It's a it big is, landing, isn't it? I really like this. And then this would be your front room. Wow. wow. It is so big. And if these two are serious about a project, there's an opportunity to create modern open plan living at the back of the house. What you've got to do is you've got to stand here, OK? Like this. Because okay. <laughs> um, that's your room. And it's a lovely room. So could we structurally <laughs> knock that yes. wall down? Yeah. It would be an amazing kitchen dining space. It would, yeah. I can see so much potential yeah. in that. With a good builder's help, it's nothing they can't manage. But some things need a bit more vision. The garden's not huge. This uh, garden is not... It's not it's a patch not, on the other it's one. Not it's such on the a shame. One. The front of the house is really lovely, and then the garden, it's just such a, a letdown, really. I think Jenny needs to dream bigger. This house is a complete project inside and out. It looks like there's even an office for Tom. I'll say it out loud. I think every home should have an outside loo. Yeah. And every man should go <laughs> and spend some time in the outside loo and not pollute the house. Yeah. Feel free to spend as much time in that outside <laughs> loo as you want to. I think my mum would agree with that. <laughs> We've both been spoilt growing up with our gardens, but at least we get sun here. Like, it is an outside space. Compared to what we've got at the moment, we can get outside. It's great that Tom is seeing the potential here. With hard work, this place could be an amazing home and a great investment. It's a strong house, and it's what they wanted. And that is my job, to find people what they want. Finally, Kirsty, you read the job description. Yes, and I'm afraid that includes humouring you, Phil. This looks like it's a master bedroom. It's really, really nice. Such a big Lovely house. bay window. I genuinely think it has a lot of There's potential. You could fit a dining table in this hall. <laughs> what are you feeling now? There's so much work to do, there's no denying that, but you can see so much yeah. potential. As far as this is concerned, there's no rush. As far as the other one is concerned, there is. OK. We're not in a rush for this one, so we just need to think about the other one. Definitely. Right up against this yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Okie dokie, right? Good to have two to choose from at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two already, Kirsty. I'm way behind you, but I think the next place may just sway my couple in the right direction. In fact, it's to the village of Sway that we're heading. Outdoor space comes at a premium in their ideal location of Ringwood, but this village, 10 miles southeast, offers that all important garden. It's also nearer to George's mum. Much closer to your mum? Yes. What do you reckon we'd be? Ten minutes? Yeah, well, not even that. I'd say five. Really? Minutes, maybe. <laughs> oh, <So> brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> With just a few shops and country pubs, the tiny village of Sway is the most rural of our destinations and is the only one that's actually in the New Forest National Park. Well, coming to Sway, you can get yourself a four bed detached house. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. I chose it for a couple of reasons. Nice and close to your mum. Yeah. And the fact that this house has a lovely garden. And, and I could tell yesterday that the garden was a bit of a make or break. It, was, it seemed to be quite a lot more be. important than we thought it would be. With just a short walk to open forest, this detached four-bedroomed house sits in a quiet cul-de-sac close to the village centre. Inside, an open-plan kitchen diner leads into a spacious living room that's perfect for socialising. And outside, there's a fantastic raised decking area for barbecues, overlooking a lawn for Will. 
its asking price is higher than the top of their budget, at £425,000, but we have it on good authority that there's room for manoeuvre. It's a smaller house than what we saw yesterday. Yeah. But I think the usable space is good. There doesn't seem to be much work mm. space. Oh dear, Phil, quick, show them the other cooking area outside. So I thought of an evening, mates round. Yeah, great social space. Barbecue already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does that come with Perfect, the house? Perfect, ready to go. <laughs> Got my grass as well, which is important. <laughs> well, why don't you wander around that way? Because there's a greenhouse and a shed and everything as okay. it wraps yeah. around. Yeah, definitely. And um, Georgie, I'll yeah. show you upstairs. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Upstairs, there's a family bathroom and four good sized bedrooms. But before we go any further, I need to know how Georgie feels about Sway. Obviously, you felt that Verwood, the first house, mm -hmm. was too far away. Yeah. Is it better to be closer to Mum here or closer to Ringwood? It is nice being close to Mum because when Will's going to be away, I can go and say hello. But it is nice being close to the Ringwood because it's got a lot going on. Will must desperately want a home and call base. That's yeah. something he's really looking forward yeah. to. And I'm looking forward to mm. sharing it as well. It's a bit bland, isn't it? It's kind of like the rest of the house, unfortunately. What are your thoughts? It's not ticking many boxes. I really don't think it would work for us. I know this isn't their first choice location, but it does offer the outside space they wanted. They know that that is a fantastic garden, but I think they're going to decline the house anyway, which actually leads me to conclude that house number two has got to be very much still in the running. Well, there we have it. That was house number three. Yeah. Um, is it the one for you? Uh, I don't think don't so. Don't think so. No. No. I'd kind of guessed as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered whether coming here, recognising the fact it's got a fantastic garden, but declining the house anyway, may help in some weird way crystallise your <laughs> thoughts on house number two, where you loved the house, yeah. but had questions about the garden. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's safe to say it has done. Well, look, let's head back towards Ringwood. I've got one other thing to show you, and Kirsty's coming. Whether that'll be any help or not, I can't <laughs> promise, but she's coming anyway. Right. You'd be lost without me, Phil. Maybe. But I do think I've found where they want to be. On my own. I'm in Hampshire, where it looks like it could be plain sailing for me, as my couple know exactly which direction they're heading. The thing is, Phil, just because you point your tiller in one direction doesn't mean the winds are with you. The good ship Spencer doesn't need wind in its sails, Kirsty. Well, I've been steering a steady course all along for Tom and Jenny. They're keen to escape their tiny rental flat and get on the property ladder. And after seeing property one in Shirley, they were smitten inside and out. That is a big, big tick. I really like it. But they also relish the prospect of property two, a larger place and a project with potential. And over with Will and Georgie, we have one property in the running in their favourite location of Ringwood, and my last house is here too. Now, we are about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, round the corner from property number two. Yes. This one needs some vision. But to live in this spot, that might be what it takes. I kid you not, there are only two houses in Ringwood that could potentially match your criteria. Yeah. This has got loads of space, it's well within budget. The thing about this house is you don't go in thinking, I might want to change a few things. You go in thinking, we're going to completely update this house. Right, OK. okay. This Georgian-style townhouse on a corner plot just half a mile from Ringwood Town Centre and two miles from Open Forest ticks a lot of Will and George's boxes. It's the most open plan of all the houses, with a wrap-around kitchen diner. Upstairs, there are three double bedrooms, an ensuite and a family shower room for guests. But at the back, there's a possible problem for Will. No grass. It's 30 grand under their budget at £385,000, leaving money for the work. Straight into the living room. So it's been immaculately looked after. OK. But you've got good open space, which yeah, is what we've been plan. talking about. Yeah. yeah. Is that archway uh, You could. I would think you could yeah. get yeah. rid of that yeah. archway yeah. very easily, yeah. yeah. Let's have a look at the kitchen. Great. Phil's in charge. Phil's always in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Note that's greeted with laughter. And through to the kitchen, which wraps around... It is a big kitchen. 
you could make this one big space. But you would have the budget to redo the kitchen. Because this is on the market for 385. Okay. Really? Yeah. Okay. So Bit cheaper. Even at a price that low, I'd still have to get them a deal because they'll need to call in the cavalry out the back too. Paving slabs. Yeah. Lots of paving slabs. It's a good sized garden, but uh, I do like something to mow. I'll turf it for you. <laughs> you turf it for me, okay. Brilliant. We'll hire you in. A novel way to save a couple of quid, Phil. It must be kind of exciting but slightly nervous time because you're desperate to set up home with Georgie and actually have a permanent home yourself for the first time in a very, very long time. Yeah, we're, we're very much looking forward to it. She's lived without me the last few years, so I think uh, it'd be nice to actually spend yeah. a bit of time in our own place together. This house is great downstairs, but upstairs you slightly feel that there was a bit of an architectural blip going on. Mm, and the Artex ceiling. The RTXC, yeah. But the reason I don't think any of this is a problem is because I sense, with my special skills, that this has actually fixed you on house number two. Yeah. And I don't, we're just not ready for a project. I knew this place was a gamble, but at least property two is still in the running. When you got that new suit, did you take the trousers out to get matching socks? Whatever I'm wearing, it obviously works because this search is all leading back to house number two. Oh, I think I'm in clover. Same can't be said about you. My couple have currently got a choice of two houses. Two out of two. You two all right up there? Yes, thanks. Yeah. Having a look. Does it improve? Um... No. No. It, it has to be <laughs> said, Phil, it's not, uh, if, if they weren't grabbed by the downstairs, they weren't going to be grabbed yeah, by the yeah, upstairs. Right. The upstairs um, isn't its strong suit. Would you like to go back and see house number two tomorrow? Yes. Yes, we would. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Have a second look. We want to bring our tape measure. They want to bring the tape measure, Phil. <laughs> this is a good sign. It is indeed. Sensible house hunters never go anywhere without a tape measure. Will and Georgie are hoping they'll have a happy future together in their own home. And according to a recent Office of National Statistics survey, they could hardly have chosen a better area. The New Forest is one of the most contented regions in the country, with 79% of locals revealing they were satisfied with their lives. If they were to move near Sherwood Forest and Nottingham, that falls slightly to 75%, who are merry with their lot. But were they to choose the worlds of the Scottish Highlands, they would once again be in an area where 79% of people say they feel fulfilled. And back on the edge of the New Forest, I've shown Tom and Jenny two properties that they liked. But in this fast-moving market, you can't stop and think for too long. There are already offers on Property One, and they could lose it if they don't act fast. I need to talk to you about yesterday. We were mulling things over last night over some dinner and, and yeah, we really like Property One. I think we're in, in quite a good place to put an offer in. It's an unusual step, but they don't want to lose Property One. It has an asking price of £230,000, but I've learned that there are offers on the table, at least one of which is over the asking price. They will accept that offer this morning unless we make a higher offer. I've got a limit that I don't want to go us to go above. And what is that limit? At all, that is 2375. Are you happy with that? Yeah. It's just so difficult that we haven't even viewed property three yet. I have had a long chat with my clients and they have said that they can afford to go to 237,500. And uh, I'm going to absolutely cross my fingers and hope for the best. The offer is in, but there are no guarantees. So it's best to have another option. And I think property three in the nearby town of Hythe could be it. With wonderful views, a marina, an old-fashioned high street and weekly markets, Hythe has that community feel that Tom and Jenny said they wanted and only a 20-minute ferry ride from the city. The house I'm going to show them is on a quart street, not far from the marina. And who could be waiting for us? Morning, Hello. guys. Oh, look, Phil's got a flower. I've got you a flower to cheer you up. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Phil. Oh, Phil, you're all charm when you want to be. Almost as charming as this little place. 
It looks really sweet, doesn't it? Yeah, really quiet. You can imagine knowing every neighbour. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> This 1960s semi-detached family house has three bedrooms and a large, light lounge diner. A conservatory leads to a garden with a paved patio and a small lawn for Tom and Jenny's essential outdoor space. It needs a little updating, but with an asking price of £225,000, it has great potential. And we're the first to see it, giving us an advantage in this merciless market. I just love how sunny it is. Lots of opportunity to add to it. Yeah. yeah. If you take everything out and just see it as a blank canvas, it's got loads of room. I mean, I know you're after a village -y setting in town, but this is a village. Yeah, yeah. it does feel very oldy baldy And that's why we brought them here, for that old-fashioned community feel. But Jenny doesn't seem dazzled by it. I'm so neutral to this property, and I'd, perhaps it's just because we've made that offer, or maybe it's the property itself, I'm, I'm not sure. Sounds You've... like Kirsty's work is done. <laughs> Kirsty has done a really good job. I thought we'd do You don't do have that. to say things like that. <laughs> Let people speak their mind, Pip, and I sense from the way our tour is going that Tom is about to speak his. This is a bit boxy. The characters may be lacking a little bit yeah. once you've taken everything out. It's not very sexy, is it, Tom? Not. No. Really. no. Well, there's no pussyfooting around the matter. I suspect the decision has already been made. I do think if you'd shown them this first, they might react very differently. But I understand they've seen something they like. They're kind of emotionally after that. And therefore, it's a bit difficult to be this, objective about this. This is a lovely, lovely, lovely little house. Yeah. It really, really is. But it's little. It's littler than the house that they put an offer in for. So I'm being very... Have you noticed quite quiet and philosophical? No. Clearly, philosophy is wasted on you, Phil. But if this place is out of the running, it means everything hangs on the offer Tom and Jenny made on property one. We put the offer forward and everything, and afterwards I thought, I'm not sure he sounded chipper enough. Oh, now, do it, you think 237500 is going to be rejected? I don't know. If Dan does come back, can we just kind of ooze something out of him? Let's please? wait and see. Wait. Yes. As Phil leaves for the new forest, I need to call the estate agent to find out whether Tom and Jenny's offer has been accepted. What is meant to be is meant to be. Yeah, OK, I'm going, to hold, I'm going to hold you to that. OK. I am uh, fine, slightly on tenterhooks. Right. Right. So everyone's gone quite significantly above the asking price and we are the lowest. OK, thanks, Claire. Bye. Your offer of 237500 was the lowest of the top offers. You probably have about an hour or so to think about it. I think, think I fell in love with it. Yeah, and it, it's not lost yet, is it? No, not yet. They need to decide if they're going to up their offer, and the clock is ticking. In Southampton, Tom and Jenny's dream of having a home of their own is within sight. They now need to decide whether to stretch to the top of their budget to secure the first property they saw. And while Tom and Jenny are thinking, Will and Georgie are close to deciding on a home they can finally be together in. So we're heading back to property two, where the only downside was an unwelcome intruder in the garden. We've sort of come to peace a yeah. little bit with yeah. the idea of it. I can uh, make it look pretty, that's yeah. fine. You get a lawnmower. Oh, yeah. I'll get my <laughs> lawnmower. So you want on this bit here. It yeah. needs it. <laughs> I'm so proud of these two. They've just tackled the whole process in such a grown-up and level-headed way. I think they're going to go for it, but we're not home and dry yet because I'm still going to have to get it at the right price. But we might be in a strong position as the vendor is after a quick sale. Now, I've got to ask you guys something. Do you love it? Yeah. Does it get you in the heart? Yeah I, yeah, I love this house. There's just so many things that it ticks, and I think even when we were looking at the other houses, I just couldn't get this one off, off the brain. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and it's really nice to be back as well because we've practically moved in. Yeah. <laughs> we're measuring things up. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> not the way to do it. <laughs> one step at a time, yeah. <laughs> well, look, let's go and get a drink yeah. and um, decide what you want to do. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, Thanks. okay. 
back in Southampton, Tom and Jenny have come to a decision. You both look borderline petrified. Yeah, we're a little bit tense. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We know that 237500 was the lowest of the offers, so what do you want to pay for Property One? We've spoken about this quite a bit. The figure is 245. Right, OK. Mm. Hey, Claire. We have had quite a lot of agonising going on around here. Our final figure is, is 245,000, which is quite a leap, so as you can see, it really is the last ditch attempt. Thanks, bye. She said, hold on to your seat and give me a moment. But right now, a moment feels a very long time for these two. On the outskirts of the New Forest, Will and Georgie are ready to make a decision about the three-bedroom house in Ringwood. It's on the market for £425,000, 10 grand over budget. But from speaking with local agents, I sense there may be room for some negotiation. I think we, we both want to go ahead and, and put in an offer. Excellent, excellent <laughs> news. Is it possible to go lower and move up to more yeah. like the 405, 407? I mean, yeah. in, our, in our head, we were looking around that as top. As top, top you know. yeah. Let's do that. Let's go in at 400 so, and say, if you'll shut the door, no more viewings, we'll offer 405. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy to go for it? Yes. Because we need to get this phone yeah. call in before yeah, the solicitors all go home. Nick, very good afternoon. It's Phil Spencer here. I'm pleased to say that the, um, that the buyers are very happy with it. They love it. The offer that they wished me to put forward to you was for £400,000. However, if your client would take it off the market, they would pay a further £5,000. But offers are being handled by the vendor's solicitor, and unfortunately, the agent can't reach them. Solicitors are good at this, aren't they? Quarter past five and they've gone home. A uh, bit of an anticlimax yeah, really to get to this point. <sighs> OK, well, okay. fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, I'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile. Yeah, well, yeah. cheers. Cheers, thank cheers. you. Cheers. Don't relax too much, Phil. Your work doesn't end today. And in Southampton, we're having an equally tense wait. <laughs> Claire. Hello. Yes. Right. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, bye. I just have to say, congratulations. <laughs> Success and at five grand under budget. Oh my god, look, has. Thank you. Thank you. So oh, much. Let's drink. Yeah. Cheers. Seven weeks on, my athletic pair have almost reached the finishing line. Great news. After their survey, they were able to negotiate a slightly cheaper deal. We're in a really much better position, and it allows us to do all the types of things on the property that we always wanted to do, so... Yeah. That's really exciting us about getting in there as well. Yeah. This canny couple are champing at the bit to put their stamp on their first home. I've got my scrapbook ready with all my pictures. I'm going to make it my yeah. own, definitely. What I am looking forward to is being able to have the French doors open, Jen in, inside doing the salad and stuff, and I'm outside <laughs> doing the barbecue. Yeah, probably Let's more than all. <laughs> Righto, I'll be straight over with a bottle of fizz. With exchange of contracts imminent, there'll be sizzling sausages over hot coals within weeks. On the edge of the new forest, Georgie and Will's initial offer was rejected. So they decided to up their bid and we carried on with negotiations. It was an anxious four week wait. We thought we hadn't got anything and then suddenly we got this offer accepted. We sealed the deal at 418,000 pounds, seven grand under the asking price. I cried. <laughs> you did, yeah. It was, it was very, well, it was a really ecstatic yeah. moment, wasn't it? They've only just got the keys, and now this pair are getting down to the serious business of homemaking. It's been great to be able to get in and get going. I've got some of all my, my things now. I've got my lawnmower. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it <laughs> couldn't be happier, really. And Will's wasted no time in giving the front and back some stripes. 
with Phil's help, we've kind of hit the jackpot with it, really. It's all worked out mm. very perfectly, yeah. Happy days. I think it did all work out rather beautifully. Seems everyone's a winner this week.